Good morning and welcome. I'm pleased to be here with all of the MFEA members this year at the convention. My name is Beverly Atkins Miriam, and I represent Printwell, who has been a strategic partner of the MFEA for decades. We produce the MFEA magazine, Michigan Fun, that I'm sure that all of you are familiar with. Printwell is a full service printing and marketing company that is a source for your festivals. In these challenging times, it is important to pursue many avenues to market your festivals. Print is a tangible medium that will complement your social media efforts. I'm available to discuss at any time any of your ideas or you want to have me come up with ideas for your marketing efforts and you can reach out to me by phone by email um, and you will have that contact information from this session now i would like to introduce kevin donnelly who will give today's breakout session on the value of print today during the session Please feel free to ask questions on the chat button or at the end of the session. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. I too am very pleased to uh, be here uh, this morning participating in this uh, event. It's uh, something new for us as it is uh, for you, I'm sure. And. Um, we have, uh, I hope, some interesting uh, material to present. I'm going to try to uh, keep the program moving along and make it as interesting as possible. And um, again, please use the chat. If you have any questions, I will try to answer them as we go through the program. I'm going to now uh, share the presentation. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> We want to talk about the value of print media today in a very uh, different environment that we're all functioning in. And um, I really want to uh, cover uh, three topics. I want to talk about the pandemic as an accelerator, uh, something which is called the revenge of analog. And then I'm going to go over some examples of the way in which print media engages us, engages us uh, through our senses. So what do we mean when we say the pandemic is an accelerator? Well, there's been quite a bit of um, studies done, reports in the media. I have here a quote from the Business Insider. The COVID crisis has accelerated trends that were already in motion, including a number that will have profound implications on how we work, create, and do business. So this is obviously changing things for us, but many of the things that are changing, even uh, this event itself, uh, were already underway uh, prior to the development of the pandemic, but the pandemic has driven them forward in a dramatic manner. And so I wanna give a couple of examples of this. Uh, of course, we're just now going through the election process and we saw that the vote by mail totals were up dramatically and that tens of millions of ballots and other materials were mailed out to the public. Uh, in the most recent data, it showed that uh, mail-in or absentee ballots represented about 22% of the vote totals, whereas in this 2020 election, those totals are somewhere around 50 to 67%. Uh, we won't really have the final numbers, I don't think, until uh, everything has been finally counted. But this really was a dramatic change in the behavior of the public as a result of the pandemic. But these numbers were already rising prior to this year. We also talk about the digitization process. Uh, many of you may have gone to restaurants today where uh, instead of getting a menu, you get uh, a QR code to scan in order to um, find out what the menu options are. These QR codes have been around for a while. They've been somewhat slow to, to take hold, 
but I think some of these things now, this connection between the physical world and the online world uh, are being, as I say, accelerated. Virtualization, uh, you know, we're, we're all now becoming accustomed to uh, participating in these Zoom meetings. Um, and this chart here shows uh, the dramatic increase in the number of Zoom meetings since um, March, which has gone up to about 15 million per week. Um, and, uh, you know, again, these are things that we were all getting involved in one way or the other previously, but now it's, it's, a, it's a requirement. Online shopping. Of course, you know, everyone uh, shops at Amazon and waits for the package to arrive uh, on their doorstep. But uh, in the recent period now, we've seen how companies like Instacart, where uh, you get a personal shopper going to the grocery store, buying things for you and, and delivering it to your home, this has transformed uh, the shopping experience. And, uh, you know, of course, the technology itself continues to evolve. Um, you know, the iPhone 12 uh, really is an unbelievable device. Uh, it, it now includes 5G, which is, uh, you know, the super fast uh, mass broadband Internet uh, connectivity with 11 trillion um, operations per second uh, with a neural engine with built-in uh, machine learning and so on. Uh, you know, these devices are extremely powerful and, uh, you know, are changing the way we live our lives each day. So, but however, this is leading to, you know, something of a, a problem of people staring into their phones and being completely socially disconnected. Uh, there's this uh, French photographer, Antoine Geiger, who's done this series of photos uh, which uh, show the, the public being drawn into their devices. Uh, he calls it soul sucking. Um, you know, these are, th this is the downside of these transitions. So really, what is, the, what is the answer to all of this? There's a book that was published in 2016 by David Sachs called The Revenge of Analog. Um, and why real things truly matter. And he analyzed a whole number of phenomenon, including the comeback of vinyl records, the uh, growth of board games and, and print media. And um, I think this is very important. He said, surrounded by digital, we now crave experiences that are more tactile and human centric. We want to interact with goods and services with all of our senses, and many of us are willing to pay a premium to do so, even if it is more cumbersome and costly than its digital equivalent. And, um, you know, I think that's really what people are, are craving in this environment, is to, is to be connected in a real way, not simply in a virtual way. And I think print does allow us uh, to do that. Here's a chart that shows the, the dramatic increase in vinyl record sales over the past decade. Uh, people are returning to this form because, you know, the digital technologies are convenient and easy to use, but from a quality standpoint, it's not the same experience. Also with uh, publishing. And this is where we're getting into um, this discussion of print. The ebook adoption rates have fallen. This was, uh, you know, the Kindle Reader uh, ebook craze was extremely popular uh, when it first uh, came out. But the uh, experience of reading books on a tablet has flattened out dramatically. And this has corresponded with an, a rising. Uh, interest in printed books. Um, even in the even during this uh, experience with the pandemic, the number of print books has gone up from 2019 to 2020 by 6.4 percent. In every category, we've seen increase an increase in the um, in the number of books being sold and purchased by the public. 
This is very interesting given the predictions, the incessant predictions that print is a dying media. So what do we mean by the healing power of print? Print triggers memories, it triggers emotions, it allows people to disconnect from their devices, take a book, get away from it all, take a newspaper, sit down without distraction, constant interruptions of social media, texting, and go to your mailbox and look at the material that's coming into your home without being online. These are the things that people, I think, today really look forward to under these conditions of isolation and social distancing. And print really helps to bridge that gap. So I want to talk a little bit, and, and, and I'm going to try a little bit of an experiment here because I want to show some examples of the different way in which uh, print media engages us. Uh, first of all, starting with size. Um, there are many different sizes of printed materials, and we'll begin with the, the largest item that I had available, which is this, this calendar um, for the railroad company. Um, you know, quite impressive. Uh, and, you know, this has an impact. We have also... Um, this was a postcard that got mailed during the elections. Um, you know, this doesn't imply endorsement of any particular party or individual, but, you know, when this shows up in your mailbox, you're going to notice it. It's, it's big, it's long, and uh, it doesn't cost any more money to mail this than it does uh, any other size postcard. Here's another um, example of a large format piece. This is a, a book of all the, the states in the United States with beautiful photography. Um, large format, very impressive, something that uh, really you can sort of submerge yourself into. Now, you know, yes, large pieces are, are important, but also we have smaller items. This is a, uh, a, a daily prayer book. Uh, which, you know, can easily go into your pocket. Um, it's got the uh, daily devotionals for the months of September, October, and November. Uh, quite inexpensive uh, piece. It also contains a, 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 an envelope in the center for uh, fundraising. Uh, very good uh, utilization of resources and portable and accessible at any time. Next would be texture. So this is where we get to the tactile element of printing. Um, this is somewhat more difficult to show uh, in this environment, but this, this is an annual report we produced uh, with a, a shovel and some dirt here, and the uh, surface of this paper where the dirt is has been coated with a textured varnish that feels uh, gritty and uh, you know has the has the effect of being sandy so uh, this is this is something which engages uh, the recipient and is quite uh, affordable not not ridiculously expensive and there are many other types of uh, textures that can be applied to print materials paper of course you know we have many different types of paper many types of coating uh, thicknesses uh, they all uh, play a role in the in the sen in the sensory experience. This is another annual report with uh, some really nice design and photography. Uh, the interior of this piece is uh, on an uncoated, bright white offset paper, and the the cover is coated. Um, so it's sort of a combination uh, coated sheet with uh, offset uncoated paper. Very nice. Um, very nice reproduction and uh, excellent experience for the reader. What else? Color, of course. Most of what we do here at Printwell is, is full color work, uh, as most printing companies uh, similar to us are today. Um, this is an example of some very nice 
photography. This is all different kinds of architecture in a calendar for the uh, American Concrete Institute. Quite beautiful. Again, also, uh, the stock here is a mat, uh, which has lower glare from the lights and also can be uh, written on uh, with a pen um, on, the, on the calendar pages. But, um, you know, this color photography is, is very, very nice uh, and uh, excellent reproduction. Next, we have coatings. So back at the be beginning of the, the pandemic and the, and the shutdown here in Michigan, uh, we decided here at Printwell we wanted to do something to uh, highlight these um, features of, of print. And we sent a postcard to all of our customers and our contacts that said Printspiration. And uh, this word print here has a dimensional coating which is raised off the surface. It's also a, it's a metallic appearance, uh, but it, 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 it's something that invites the recipient to say, you know, oh, what is that? I want to I feel that. Um, so again, it, it helps, uh, especially at the mailbox, when somebody receives something like this, it helps them to engage with the, with the item and uh, spend more time with it. And if you're trying to get someone to come to your event or think about scheduling, making plans to attend, your event, you really want to kind of stop them in their tracks and get them to focus for a moment and cut away all the other distractions to say, yeah, that, that's something I want to be involved in. Other, other types of coding, uh, this is a magazine, uh, Gross Point magazine, and you can see it's very glossy. It has a UV coating across the cover. Uh, of course, it does great uh, effect for the advertiser on the back cover but uh, it, it provides durability. It, it, it indicates that this is a high quality piece that someone is gonna hold on to. Uh, this comes out every two months. So, you know, uh, the, 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 the goal here is to have the recipient keep this on their kitchen table or put it in their, on their coffee table uh, and that people will be looking at it and reading the content uh, over a two month period of time. This is another uh, catalog. This is a catalog project for Great Pretenders, and uh, I don't know if you can see this, but down at the bottom here, there's a special coating um, on this uh, lettering, which uh, it's a foil stamp, uh, which you know that's something somewhat more costly but quite effective. Um, and these are all uh, costumes, sort of high-end costumes uh, for kids. Um, quite an effective use of foil stamp on the cover there. Okay, next, folding. You know, it's, it's, it's an interesting thing. You know, we, we deal with paper every day, all of us in our lives, and, you know, just simply the folding aspect or folding capability of paper is something which people engage it with. Um, and if you use uh, folding in somewhat unique ways you can get interesting effects. So here's a, a brochure, uh, off-road safety tips for Honda motorcyclists. And it's, it's a brochure that kind of rolls out. But the interesting thing about it is on this last panel, it's folded the other way. So it's just a little bit different approach to taking a roll fold and doing something a little different uh, which, you know, the, the recipient may or may not notice that, but it does change the way they interact with this and what they see first, second, and third, and so on. So it's something to think about. It's a sheet of paper that's probably, I would say, about 21 inches by eight and a half. Uh, not, an, not a super expensive thing to do, but uh, it gives you a lot of real estate to work with on the inside. Uh, here's a an auction uh, brochure for the Dumachelle company in downtown Detroit. Um, it's a trifold, not really complicated, but again, you know, you got a lot of real estate to work with in terms of the design here. It folds in half, it, it trifolds and then it folds in half and it becomes a mailer, uh, mailed at the letter rate. 
Then the last thing on unfolding I want to show you is we, we, we helped design this uh, mailer for an automotive company that had a, an airbag recall. And uh, we kind of turned this piece into a, an airbag. So when the recipient gets it, it says pull out, and they pull out, and it pops open like that. Um, so, you know, again, interesting use of the folding properties of paper. What else do we have? Next. Shape. Okay, well, I showed this. Uh, it's kind of the shape of an airbag. The whole sheet was die cut in a circle. Uh, but we also have, when it comes to shape, we also, and this is somewhat difficult to show here, but the surface of this catalog has a has an embossing with raised, uh, this, this uh, these are clutches. Clutches and flywheels has a raised surface here, multi-levels. So it gives this something of a texture, but it also changes the dimension of the paper itself. Very interesting and engaging way to um, promote uh, something. Okay, interactivity. So there are lots of different ways to use printing to get the consumer or the recipient to interact with it. Uh, perforation is one of the um, most common ways with, you know, everyone's seen perforated coupons that can be torn out of a, a booklet or a sheet. This particular piece is a, an automotive dealership promotion uh, where it says mega money, pull all six tabs, match one pair, two pair, or possibly three pair. And you have to peel back these little windows here to see what the numbers are behind to see if you've won. Um, and these are printed in the tens of thousands and mailed. Uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a promotion to get car buyers to come into a car dealership. This is another piece uh, that we mailed last year for Michigan State University around the holiday holidays, thanking uh, donors for their contributions. And uh, these are stickers that someone would put on their Christmas gifts uh, with the from and to labeling for uh, for the holidays. Quite a good way to um, take advantage of the interactive properties of uh Printing, and then I'm, I'm also mentioning scratch off. I don't have an example of that, but that's a common uh, technique where a scratch off uh, item is applied to the sheet of the to the surface of the paper, and they scratch it off to see uh, what the information or the messaging is underneath there. These are all unique things about print media that none of the other digital uh, technologies can do. It's a physical item. It has tremendous value and impact, and it is expensive, but it is uh, effective. And we'll, we're going to talk about that as well. Fragrance uh, is another item. I don't have an example, and again, wouldn't be able to sort of demonstrate that online, but there are uh, fragrance applications on printing, which you rub the surface of the paper and it releases uh, the fragrance oils what, whatever the uh, item is that's being sold. We've worked with companies that sell candles, that sell different types of oils, um, and, and those things can be suspended in a varnish and uh, sent to the recipient. It doesn't contaminate the mail. It has a very long shelf life, and it's a very effective use of, um, of the technology. Again, somewhat expensive, but not outrageous. Okay, so... I want to finish up with, uh, how are we doing on time? 9.49, we're getting close to the end. I want to wrap up just with a couple of quick things um, about uh, print that I want to make sure you're aware of. First of all, there's you know uh, a lot of messages going out to people saying, you know, save a tree, don't waste paper, and so on. Print is a sustainable media. Uh, you know, the, we, we, we are part of uh, an, an organization, it's a global organization called the Forest Stewardship Council, which is involved in managing the world's forests and replanting. For every tree that gets taken down for paper, 
three more trees get planted. And the point being made here is that, you know, the trees, of course, absorb carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, uh, and it's part of an ecosystem that is uh, cleaning the atmosphere. So print is the most sustainable media because of the uh, replenishment of the trees, which takes place. And, uh, you know, we, we can have the FSC logo put onto your piece if that's something which is a concern and you want to convey that to your audience that you are buying paper that is harvested, that comes from wood and fiber that is harvested in an environmentally uh, responsible manner. Print is authoritative. Uh, we have a lot of problems with trust today in terms of the information that is available. Uh, and the post office did in, uh, I believe in 2016, the post office ran a public survey and mail came in as the most credible uh, technique for political outreach. And I'm sure many of you uh, received gobs of postcards in the mail this year uh, during the election season, but it does give you the opportunity to sit down, evaluate, think about without being bombarded uh, through the TV or uh, through email. Um, it's a much more effective way. And when someone has spent the money to produce a print piece and mail it to you, you know that you know it's not a farce. And uh, lastly, print is effective. It does help cut through the digital overload. Direct mail is easier to understand and more memorable than digital media. It, according to studies, it requires 21% less cognitive effort to process and elicit a much higher brand recall. So it is memorable. Print is memorable. As I said earlier, it touches the emotions and uh, it engages uh, people in ways that the other media cannot do. So, the, to conclude the presentation, uh, I've listed off a few items here that, that we think would be of interest to your uh, organizations and your events. We'd love to talk to you about how we can help you promote, how you can inform. Uh, and I know that, you know, we're still going through this uh, situation where uh, public events um, you know, are being uh, are not being held. So we have time to prepare for when uh, we do return to some type of normalcy. I, I you know, I'm not going to promise anything. We all are waiting for this thing to, uh, you know, and hoping that this thing will will end. Um, but, you know, it's now is the time to talk about how you can utilize print media to promote uh, your event and um, do something which genuinely is uh, uh, the next best thing to actually being there with someone to send them something in the mail or to have them pick up a piece that reminds them of you and your function. So with that, do we have questions? How can we get a scratch off example? Yes, please. Um, please, uh, click on the, um, the button associated with our, our company and we will get an email. Uh, Rebecca, we will get an email and uh, we will follow up with you uh, with some samples on, of Scratch Off. Yes. Anyone else? Uh, we will be here uh, for the, you know, the duration of the program. We will be uh, in our booth uh, during the expo period today from 1135 to 12. Please stop by and see us. Um, I really would encourage you to, uh, if you get a chance, get a copy of this book, The Revenge of Analog. It's quite informative. Uh, you know, we are printers. We do, uh, of course, love what we do. We are at the same time um, recognizing that, you know, we live in a world which is full of technology. We're not rejecting technology. We're saying that print has a place within the spectrum of media options, and it can do things 
that the others cannot do. And it's that that really is the value that we that we offer. Okay, so thank you. Can you recommend a good folding machine? <laughs> well, we'd have to, Rebecca. We'd have to talk with our with our technology folks here. But yeah, we could we could uh, maybe uh, make some recommendations there. It all depends upon what you're trying to fold and uh, you know how fast it needs to go and so on and so forth. Um, but sure, let's let's talk about that. I can get. Uh, I can have our uh, production folks uh, involved and, and uh, you know, they may have some additional questions for you. Any, anyone else? I do appreciate you attending uh, this session. Um, again, uh, Beverly is available. If you need anything, please, please contact Bev or myself. Um, We'll be glad to answer any questions. Uh, we will be here at the expo portion today and tomorrow, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, talking with you. We, we, we are very pleased to be part of the MFEA um, family of sponsoring companies and uh, appreciate very much the opportunity to participate in this type of event, which is new for, for all of us. Okay, thank you very much.